Hello humans, welcome back. We are in unit two. And now we're gonna jump into a little bit more uh, deep learning in terms of this code, this whole programming thing. When we talk about coding, it's so easy to forget everything that goes on uh, in these programs. You open an app on your phone and, and you just use it and you think nothing about the fact that it responds to your touch on the screen and how that code works or the fact that it's able to network and interact with other devices and how that code works. And it's so easy to forget how many layers there are in this software development kind of world that we live in. Uh, and it's not like one person creates an app and they've written every single layer of code. They've written this one top layer that uses code that's in the next layer, which uses code that's in the next layer. It's this whole crazy structure where everything's depending on layers beneath it. But um, we're gonna start to dive in a little deeper. We're gonna talk today about uh, Booleans, about Boolean statements, Boolean variables, conditional operators and logical operators. I'm gonna kind of keep it low level for the beginning part uh, with our basic talk about conditional and logical. And then I'm gonna end it with a little bit of a high level piece for you to go look at if you wanna dive a little deeper or if you're interested in a more academic pathway. This is unit number two, topic A. This is Booleans and, and conditionals. And this is really important before we start looking at uh, actually structuring our code so that decision making can happen. We need to first understand the idea of Booleans, trues, and falses, and how we can take other expressions and bring them down to true or false. So we're gonna talk about two kinds of operators. We're gonna talk about conditional operators, which are things like less than, greater than, greater than, or equal to, whatever. And then we're gonna talk about logical operators, which are things like and, or, and not. There are more in these categories. Again, this is an introduction to Python. I wanna get you going and not make you overwhelmed initially. You can go in and you can dive way deeper with logical and conditional operations. You can spend your whole life in the world of logical uh, math and discrete mathematics if that's the world you wanna live in. Um, that's not the world I wanna live in. So I'm gonna scratch the surface with some of these deeper topics and then you can go off and investigate more on your own. So we're gonna start with this program. So for conditional operators, I'm gonna bring in two integer values from the user. Uh, so I have x equals int input, and then I just put this little literal thing in quotes, so x colon space, so then the user is gonna see x colon space, they're gonna type their number and hit enter, and then it's gonna say y colon space, they're gonna type their number and hit enter, and then our code is gonna store those in variables called x and y. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna do a print statement where I say x is less than y, and then a colon, and then I'm gonna, as a string, print the result of this conditional operator is x less than y. Now this is what's called a Boolean statement. This statement can only evaluate one of two ways. It can evaluate to true or it can evaluate to false. There is no other option. Either x is less than y or x is not less than y. Those are the only two options. It's a binary operation. So I've repeated this for greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and equal to. I just realized my order's a little off. It's a little bit annoying, so I'm gonna rearrange the order. There we go. So less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, and then equal to. Now, look at the equal to conditional operator. It is two equal signs. Now this is important because we use one equal sign when we are assigning value to a variable. We use two equal signs when we are comparing true or false statement, whether something is equal to something else. Very important we have that distinction. So I'm gonna run this code and we'll input a couple of numbers and we'll just kind of see how it works. So when I run it, you can see it prompts me for a value for x. So I'm gonna say x is five and it prompts me a value for y, I'm gonna say 10. So we'll see x is less than y is true, five is less than 10. x is less than or equal to y, also true. x is greater than y, false. x is greater than or equal to y, false. Again, 10 is bigger than five, so these are not gonna be true. Are they equal? No, they are not. Now we could kind of pump this up a little bit if we really wanted to. I'm not gonna do it all the way, but we could instead do something like string x plus the quotes plus string y plus quotes and the colon space and just kind of have it actually print the numbers in the statements. So if I run that again, five and 10, now you only see it on the first one, but now it actually fills it in with the numbers which is kind of nice and it looks a little prettier. You know what, let's take a quick second and let's just update that code all the way through. All right, we should be all updated now. So let's run it and let's just test it, five and 10. So now we see the statements. Five is less than 10, true. Five is less than or equal to 10, true. Five is greater than 10, false. Five is greater than or equal to 10, false. Five is equal to 10, false. 
All right, so you're starting to see how that works in terms of conditional operators and checking whether something will be true or will be false. Now, obviously, you can enter different numbers there. So I could put six and six. You can see the less thans and the greater thans are false, but anything that had the equal to in it is true. So I'll just leave that code up there for one sec. Pause it if you need to, if you wanna go have a look at how I did that. So that's conditional operators, and those are always gonna evaluate to true or false. Now you can put those directly into a print statement like we did here. You could also store them as a variable. So I could have a Boolean variable called Z that is equal to you know, X equal equals Y. And that variable is gonna be equal to either true or false. So it will in itself be a Boolean variable. So you can either store it as a Boolean variable, which again, Binary only holds true or false, or you can print it directly into a print statement, or what we'll see in the next video, we can bring them into a conditional statement like an if statement. That's conditional operators. Now we're gonna look at logical operators. I'm just gonna comment that out because I don't need it right now, and I'm gonna scroll down. Logical operators. I'm gonna create a couple of variables. I have one called A, which is equal to true, one called B, which is equal to false. And you'll notice capital T, capital F, okay? Now, when we talk about logical operators, we're talking about three primary operations, and, or and not, and these go back to electrical engineering. They go back to voltage passing through or not passing through these gates, and an AND gate will only let voltage pass through if it's true in both instances. An OR will let it pass through if either one of them is active, and a NOT is just gonna be an inverter that's gonna invert the signal. And this, this is really, if you wanna get into what's going on at the bottom layer of your computer and hardware and CPUs and all that, and OR gates, logic gates are at the core of all that, right? This is how math is, is done on the very first computers, is this idea of decision making, ANDs, ORs, and NOTs. Uh, inverting a zero to a one or taking a one and a one and seeing if it's gonna be a one or a zero and all this. So it gets pretty deep pretty fast. We're gonna keep it pretty simple. We're just gonna overlay the three main ones, which are and, or, and not. And then I, I will touch briefly on an academic piece called De Morgan's Law. So we're gonna start by just printing out a little bit so we can understand what's going on. So I am just gonna print the value of A and B. And then I'm gonna print the value of A and B not A and not B. So we can investigate a little bit what's going on. So let's start with one where they're both true. So it's gonna print the value of A, the value of B, the value of A and B, the value of A or B, the value of not A, and the value of not B. So we're gonna save that, we're gonna run this. So A is true, B is true. A and B is true because both A and B are true. Therefore, the statement A and B also evaluates to true. A or B, either A is true or B is true, that's true. Not A is the invert of A, so true becomes false. And not B is the inverse of B, so true becomes false. Cool. Let's change our values. Let's make one of them false. Okay, I made B false. Save and run. So now B is false. So, are both A and B true? No, they are not. False. Is one of them true? Yes, it is. The inverse of A, the inverse of B. Get the hang of it. Let's look at the code. So, here is the actual code to do an AND operator. It's the variable, so the Boolean, and the next Boolean. And you can have anything that evaluates a true or false on the sides of that AND. You could have the conditionals we just had in the last question. X is less than Y and x is greater than zero. Those can both be there because they both evaluate true or false. What's gonna happen in coding languages is your conditional operators have a higher order of operations than your logical operators. So it's gonna evaluate the conditionals down to true or false, then it's gonna and, or, or not those values as kind of the last-ish statements uh, in that order of operations, obviously for getting brackets. Okay, so there's our and, there's our or, and there's our not, not a, not B. In a lot of programming languages, this is an exclamation point. So not A, not B. In Python, we're gonna write out not, lowercase, just like and and or, lowercase. You'll notice my Notepad++ recognizes these, makes them yellow. Keywords, really nice there, okay? So this is that essential structure of and, or, and not. And this is really important when we try to make decisions. So you know, you're talking about um, whether or not you can divide something. So you have two numbers, and you wanna know whether you can divide them. Well, you can't divide them if the denominator is zero. So you might have to check if the denominator is greater than zero, and then maybe and 
the value is greater than 0 0.5, then you pass the test. So you might want to do stuff like that where you need these logical operators, these ands or ors, or maybe it's a user input thing and it's if they press this button or they press this button, and we want to do something that's the same action. So you've played a game where you could use the up, down, left, right arrows, but you can also use WASD. Well, the W key and the up arrow are going to provide the exact same effect. So in the code, it's probably if the up arrow or the W key is pressed, and that's going to create the same operation. So this is that idea of logical operators. Logical operators, and or not, require Booleans. So trues and falses on either side of the operator. If it's a not, there's only one operand, there's only the one, there's not one on each side. And then those can come from all kinds of crazy statements. You can see crazy long Boolean statements where people put together and string this stuff into a hot mess. Uh, but the, the core idea is that what is on either side of an and, what is on either side of an or, has to be an expression that evaluates a true or to false. All right. If all you want is to scratch the surface, stop the video here. We're going to talk a little briefly, just a mm, smidge about De Morgan's Law. It's going to bend your mind a little bit, and you can go do some Googling. Look it up. I'm not going to go crazy with it, but I want to show it to you because it's cool. But there's no challenge for this video. We're going to jump into the bigger stuff next lesson. we got to do if statements before I can put a challenge out there for you. All right. De Morgan's Law. I'm going to throw this print statement at you. Okay. It's a mess. It's fine. We're going to keep our true and false values here, and uh, I'll actually keep my little statement here where I print A and B. All right. Don't worry about the code. Let's just run it. All right. So, De Morgan's Law works two ways. Think expanding brackets, grade eight, nine, seven, math, whatever. Not A and B in brackets is equal to not A or not B. Think about like dividing each side of a math equation. That's an inequality by a negative value. You have to flip the inequality symbol. Similar mindset here. The and becomes an or when we not it. So not A and B becomes not A or not B. And then the second part of De Morgan's Law is not A or B is equal to not A and not B. Now. What I will tell you is this, when you try to put context to this, you're going to hurt your head. When you try to think about like, if I need to pass the exam and uh, have all my assignments completed in order to get my credit, and you start trying to categorize those using A's and B's, you're gonna melt your brain a little bit. So you can see it work here. So I have a true and a false. So not A and B. Well, A and B is gonna be false because they're not both true. Notting it is gonna be true. Not A or not B, not A is going to be false, not B is going to be true, or them, one of them is true, so it's true. It works. If we look down here, A or B is going to be true, because one of them is true, notting it's going to be false. Not A is going to be false, and not B is going to be true. When you're doing an AND operation, if either one of them is false, you're automatically false. So that works as well. Now you can go out and do some looking about De Morgan's Law, you want to get a little bit heavier with it. Again, it can be hard on the head. It's a cool topic. Uh, if you're kind of math minded and you like that stuff, if you're not, don't worry about it. We're not really going to touch on it again. We're going to jump into if and else statements in the next video. So that's it for unit two, topic number one, which is Booleans, conditional, and logical operators. This is so important when we start to make decision making uh, in our code, which we're going to start next time with if and else statements. There's no challenge. So just make sure you followed along with the video and it kind of made sense. If you want to code along, code along. It's never going to hurt to code and mess with things and try to get them to work and break them and fix them and break them and fix them. Beat your head against the wall a little bit and then come back. Good. All perfect learning opportunities. All right, next video, we'll jump into if and else statements. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, do all that annoying stuff that everybody on YouTube tells you to do. It keeps me going. It's awesome. Comment below if you have questions, and I'll try to hit you back as quickly as I can. And we'll see you in the next video. See ya. Bye, humans.